today we will talk about two important forces and that's going to be gravitational force gravity and weight which is also called as normal force you may be wondering isn't gravity and weight the same thing well they're not the same thing both are forces but they are a little different and today I'll tell you what what the difference between them is if you have any object very close to earth then we know it's going to accelerate down at, at a constant rate and that acceleration is g and from Newton's second law there must be a force acting on this fellow because we are in inertial reference frames at least we like to believe that and since we are in inertial reference frames and this fellow is accelerating down Newton's second law dictates that there must be a force acting on this guy and that force from Newton's second law must be equal to mass of this fellow times g and this is what we call as the gravitational force okay this is gravity every time we want to calculate gravitational force we just take mass and multiply it by g okay now let's try and understand what normal force is suppose you are here standing on the ground clearly you are not accelerating your acceleration is zero but there is a gravitational force acting on you downwards this way and that force as we just now saw is m times g but net force on you must be zero because there is no acceleration Ooh, that means someone is cancelling this one cancelling this gravitational force who do you think it's doing that well i'm pretty sure you can figure this out it's the ground you see, if there was no ground here, you would have accelerated down. So it's the ground that pushes you up. So you know what happens? The ground deforms a little bit, like this. And these deformations will be microscopic. So you'll have a microscopic deformation. And these microscopic deformations would try to uh, undeform. That is, come back to the original shape. It's just like a spring. When you stretch it, it deforms and it wants to come back, it wants to restore itself, we call it as a restoring force. A similar force, it tries to restore the ground to the original shape and therefore it's going to put a force back on you because you are the one who's deforming it. And so that's going to be the normal force. And in this example, normal force is equal to mg and we know that because you are not accelerating. Therefore, n, which is a normal force and it's called normal because it's perpendicular to the ground a contact force by the way is equal to mg in this case because acceleration is zero so since acceleration is zero we get this now if you are standing on a weighing scale over here there was a weighing scale like this I know weighing scale is not supposed to be below the ground but you know whatever if you're standing on the weighing scale notice that it'll be the weighing scale who pushes you up and therefore you're going to push the weighing scale down with the same force hence the force on weighing scale so force on weighing scale i just want to call it as w e y or call it scale the force on the scale will also be n at least in magnitude action equals minus reaction this is the action force this is the reaction force and therefore that should be equal to mg as well but your weighing scale is not going to give you the output in newtons because mg newtons instead it's going to divide by g because uh, your weighing scale has this inbuilt thing that when it's reading it's going to show you the reading it's going to divide by g therefore the reading on the scale is just going to be uh, n divided by g this automatically happens and that's going to be just m and therefore it reads so for example if your, if your mass was say 60 kilograms the normal force on you provided your acceleration is zero would be 600 newtons and therefore the force on the weighing scale would also be 600 newtons and then it's going to show you your weight that's going to be 60 kilograms and you would say well this is nice and cool but you know this is so redundant I mean we already know that if you stand on the weighing scale and if your mass is 60 kilograms the weighing scale will show you 60 kilograms right haha <laughs> not so fast well I'm gonna show you 
that the weighing scale need not always read 60 kilograms. Things can change. And that's the whole idea behind understanding what normal force and weight is. So let's let's take another example. I'm just gonna move this paper up here so we can take another example. Let's say you are again standing on a weighing scale, but this time you are inside an elevator. By the way, you will see, you're going to start loving elevators from now on because there will be so many problems that we will do inside an elevator. And uh, here is the weighing scale. And let's assume that you are now accelerating up at some acceleration A at 2 meters per second square. Again, there is gravitational force acting on you downwards. So let me use blue for that. That's going to be mg and that's going to be 600 newtons again because your mass is 60, g is 10. And there's going to be a normal force acting on you because the scale is going to deform and it's going to push back on you. Now here's my question, do you think this normal force is going to be the same as mg? Because think about it, from our reference frame, inertial reference frame, see you can always do the physics well and you can use Newton's laws from inertial reference frame. So from our inertial reference frames, do you think this particle is is in uh, is he accelerating? Well, obviously he is. The whole elevator is accelerating up. Therefore, this guy is accelerating up. Hence, the net force on this fellow can't be zero. Newton's second law. Hence, the normal force is upwards and it's accelerating upwards. The normal force must be bigger than mg, right? So let me choose upwards as positive and let's use Newton's second law. Newton's second law will just say that net force uh, it's in the y direction must be equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction we'll call this y and upwards is positive so n is positive and there's mg which is negative i hope you are not able to follow how we do newton's second law this is the most important thing people i'm going to use this all the time everywhere you're going to keep using f equals ma and f is always going to be the net force so normal force upwards, mg downwards, these are the only forces acting on this guy. So that should be equal to mass times the acceleration. It's not zero now. Therefore the normal force is going to be mg plus ma. That's going to end up becoming m into g plus a. So that will be 60 into 10 plus 2. That's 12 times 60. So the normal force in this example will not be 600. 12 times 6, it's 72. That's going to be 720 newtons. Okay. Since the scale is putting a normal force of 720 newtons on this guy, he also pushes back with 720 newtons. Therefore, the force on the scale is also going to be 720 newtons. Hence, the reading, what's going to be the reading? Well, that will be the force on the scale, that's just the normal force, 720, divided by G, because this, I told you, this, this, that's how the scales are manufactured, so that they're automatically divided by G, so that they give you the reading of mass, and notice that the reading will be now 72 kilograms. And you look at the weighing scale, and it will show you 72 kilograms while you are accelerating up. I did that. I tried this experiment at home. You should do it as well. Take a weighing scale into the Now, the question is what does this mean? What does it mean? Well, if you are smart, then you would say, gee, my my mass is 60 kilograms. I know that my mass, here it is, my mass is 60 kilograms and I know that mass is an intrinsic property, at least in Newtonian physics it is, it, it's an intrinsic property and that's not going to change regardless of whether I'm inside an elevator or I'm on earth or I'm, on, I'm in the sun or in the solid or liquid form, whatever that is, mass is not going to change. And the reason why the, the scale is showing me that the, the reading is 72 kilogram, ooh, that must be because I am accelerating. That, that is your conclusion, that you are accelerating up and so you can just work yourself backwards and being inside the elevator, you can actually figure out that your acceleration is 2 meters per second square upwards. You just, just, just go backwards. You just need math for that, okay? But, 
there is another way to, to think about this and, and that's that's going to be the key